In the late 1800s, Thomas Otto and his family moved into a mansion at the corner of Eaton and Summington Streets in Key West, Florida, now known as the Artist House. The Ottos were to be stern with their servants, sometimes even mistreating them. It was the treatment of one such heightened servant that provides a twist in this story. This woman has hired to take care of their son, Robert. One day, Mrs. Otto supposedly witnessed her practicing black magic in their backyard and fired her. Before she left, the woman gave Robert a lifelike doll which stood three feet tall. It had buttons for eyes, human hair, believed to be Robert's, and was filled with straw. Dolls that resembled children were not unheard of during this time, but this one proved to be special. Robert named the doll after himself and often dressed it in his clothes. Robert, the doll, became his trustworthy companion. He took it with him on shopping trips into town. The doll had a seat at the dinner table where Robert would sneak at bites of food when its parents weren't looking. Robert would even be tucked into bed with the boy at night. Soon, this innocent relationship took a strange nature. Soon after, Robert chose to be referred to by his middle name, Jean, after being scolded by his mother. He told her that Robert was the doll's name, not his. Jean was often heard in his toy room having conversations with Robert. Jean would say something in his childish manner, and responses could be heard in a much lower voice. Sometimes Jean would become very agitated, worrying the servants and his mother. She would, on occasion, burst in on her to find her son cowering in a corner while Robert sat patched in a chair or on a bed glaring at him. It was only the beginning. Household objects would be found thrown across the room, Jean's toys turned up mutilated, and giggling could be heard. Whenever these unusual acts took place, Jean always said, Robert did it. The boy took the punishment, but always insisted the blame on Robert. As the mischief grew, more and more servants took their leave as new ones were hired. The Otto's relatives felt it was time to do something. With the recommendation of a great aunt, Jean's parents moved Robert from his care and placed it in a box in the attic. This is where he resided for many years. After the death of his father, Jean was willed his boyhood home. He decided to live in a Victorian mansion with his new wife. Jean had become an artist and felt the house was spacious and would provide a place for him to paint. He went to the attic and dusted off his old child toy. He became attached to the doll despite of his wife's displeasure. Jean would take the doll along with him everywhere they went. He even sat in his favorite little chair while Jean and his wife slept nearby. The turret room became Robert's domain after Mrs. Otto moved back into the attic. The turret room became Robert's domain after Mrs. Otto moved him back to the attic. Their marriage slowly became sour until Mrs. Otto supposedly went insane and died of unknown reasons. Jean followed suit behind. Robert supposedly attacked people, sometimes locking them in the attic. People who passed by claimed to hear evil laughter coming from the turret room. For some time, Robert remained in his empty house by himself until a new family purchased a mansion and restored it. The doll was once again moved to the attic. This pleased it as much as the last time. The doll was often found throughout the house. On one certain night, Robert was found at the foot of his owner's bed, giggling with a knife in hand. This was enough to send them fleeing from the home. Robert was later moved to the East Mortelio Museum in Key West, where he sits perched in a glass box. Despite of his new living quarters, the dolls believed to have given up its menacing ways. Visitors and employees claim that they see the doll move. His smile has been known to turn into a scowl. One employee cleaned Robert, turned off the lights, and left for the night. The next day, he returned to find the lights on, Robert sitting in a different position as the night before, and a fresh layer of dust on his shoes. Some say he'll even curse you. If you want to take a picture of him, you must ask politely. He'll tilt his head in permission. 
However, if he doesn't want you to take the picture, and you do anyways, a curse will befall upon you and anyone who accompanied you at the museum. The same will happen if you make fun of him. To this day, Robert remains at the East Mortalio Museum in his sailor suit, clutching his stuffed lion, continuing his menacing ways.